Yes, on Times Now, the biggest casualties of the struggle for land and rights between Israel and Hamas are the innocent civilians. As Israel begin its, begins its ground offensive in Gaza, the world braces for the wider repercussions on humanity. Israel has repeatedly alleged that Hamas is using innocent civilians as human shields. We get you details of the Al Shifa hospital in the Gaza Strip, which, as per the Israeli Defense Forces, has a Hamas military base under the hospital. The Al Shifa hospital is the largest medical care facility in Gaza with uh, 1,500 beds and over 4,000 staff members. These children among, are among those who are being treated there. Even lives of babies in neonatal ICU are being endangered by the Hamas. Now look at the images released by the IDF claiming an extensive Hamas command post exists under the Al Shifa hospital. They claim it's not just Shifa but other hospitals in Gaza too that are connected with a network of terror tunnels. It shows details of different wards of the hospitals and just how below it terror is being plotted. Remember viewers when Israel bombed the Al Ahli hospital killing over 500 people there was worldwide outrage. Yes that was a tragedy of untold proportions but why is there silence over the Hamas building, a headquarters under a hospital? But before we get you the details, listen to the idea of alleging that hundreds of terrorists flooded into the hospital to hide there after the massacre of October 7th. Hamas terrorists operate inside and under Shifa hospital and other hospitals in Gaza with network of terror tunnels. We have concrete evidence that hundreds of terrorists flooded into the hospital to hide there after the massacre of October 7th. Shifa is not the only hospital, it is one of many. Hamas use of hospitals is a systematic. Israel has also released this 3D image of the Al Shifa hospital which shows how there is a hospital on top but right below there is a command headquarter of the Hamas. Using civilians as cover, the Hamas allegedly is hiding underground to evade detection and dissuade any direct attack by Israel. Listen into the recording of a call confirming the presence of a Hamas headquarter under the Al Shifa hospital. <laughs> ولا مدرسة كله عارفين تحتها مراكز قيادة وين مراكز القيادة تبع تبع الكتاب القسام آه. مركز الرئيسي وين بعرفش تحت مجمع الشفاء آه يا لطيف عن جد تحكي آه مقر القيادة الرئيسي تحت مجمع الشفاء مدامات وغرف وقيادة وكل شيء تحت مجمع الرئيسي now listen to another tape, uh, audio tape, which Israel claims is a recording of a call between an IDF officer and a senior official in the energy industry in the Gaza Strip. The officer is revealing how Hamas is sitting on a massive stockpile of fuel to keep their territory terror machinery going. Here is that audio tape. <laughs> Just a million liters of 
بني اما لو الشعب كله مات كل يوم اسرائيل قتلت 10000 شخص مواطن ما بتاثر ما بهمش ولا على المهم هم يبقوا Let's open this up. Uh, we have a distinguished guest, Mr. Mustafa Bardotti, member of the Palestinian Legislative Council, is joining us. Uh, uh, Mr. Bardotti, thank you for your time, sir. Thank you for speaking to Times Now. I want to begin thank by you. asking you that as we speak, the IDF has uh, escalated its uh, war offensive ground invasion, as it is being called. Your thoughts on that? Before I tell you my thoughts, I am so sorry that your station would have broadcasted such a big lie that the Israeli army has distributed to you in the format of a phone call. We have checked that and it's all fabricated. Like the phone call that they created uh, to fabricate the truth about the bombardment of the Baptist Anglican Hospital. So please be careful with Israeli lies. Uh, I don't want to go through them all, but let me remind you that uh, the first lie was that children were decapitated. It turned out to be a lie, and the CNN admitted that. The other lie was that women were raped, and it turned out to be a second lie, and the Los Angeles Times had to apologize for that. The third lie was that the rocket that hit the Baptist hospital was Palestinian. New York Times now investigated the matter and says that there are big doubts about the Israeli narrative. Fourth lie that Palestinians are exaggerating the number of people killed, which unfortunately the American president repeated as he did with other lies. And now the yes, Ministry of Health have issued a total list of all the people killed with their ID numbers and their age. So don't believe the Israeli lies. Enough is enough. And I think respectful uh, institutions should verify any information before you broadcast them. Now, at this moment, Israel is conducting a genocide in Gaza. They are bombarding the civilian areas with artillery, with tanks, with airstrikes. It's unbelievable. The total amount of bombs thrown on Gaza during the last 21 years is no less than the amount of of TNT that was thrown on Hiroshima during the Second World War with a nuclear bomb. That is so unacceptable. Up to now, more than 7,500 civilian Palestinians were killed, including about 3,000 children. What breaks my heart as a medical person, that I do not have the ability to communicate with our medical teams in Gaza now. We have 17 medical teams who are helping people in medical ways. And we cannot reach them because Israel not only cut the food and fuel and water from Gaza and electricity, but also they cut all the telecommunication and the internet. Why would they do that? So that people in the world would not know the truth and so that the lies of Israel will be distributed everywhere. This is unacceptable and nobody in the world should accept this atrocity and these three war crimes that are conducted against Palestinians, the war crime of genocide, the war crime of collective punishment, and the war crime of ethnic cleansing. At this very moment, 120 children in hospitals will die because there is no electricity for their incubators. At this very moment, 1,130 patients who need kidney dialysis could die, including 32 children, because they cannot get kidney dialysis. At this moment, patients with cancer cannot get treatment. Patients with diabetes cannot get insulin. And there is no safe spot in all of Gaza. They are bombarding everywhere. And what breaks my heart more is the fact that there might be 1,500 people under the rebels that we cannot get to, that people cannot get out okay. because of the continuation of airstrikes. Mr. Bhargotti, you began by saying that don't fall for uh, the propaganda peddled by the Israeli Defense Forces. And then you went on to list several instances, sir, some of which uh, you said that children were never beheaded. There were no instances of rape. Now, the, uh, the Israelis are also misleading on the number of people killed. Now, while there is no way to verify facts on the ground, Mr. Bardotti, I'm only going by claims being made by both sides. I just want to ask you, on the back of what we saw on October 7th, 
how should that be seen the strike by hamas on innocent israelis what do you think uh, was happening before the 7th of october do you have an idea of course sir i know what hap uh, what has happened in the last 50 well, years what do you know i, do, I do don't you know? want to no, tell me. Do you know? Do you tell your audience that before no, Mr. October, Bargotti, let me let me, have, let me finish. No, no. I, I, I just want to add to question. because you asked me a question, sir. I just want to add okay, to you, please. sir. Please, yeah. answer, please. You were talking about uh, the historical context. Now, even if we were not to go back context. into history of what happened in the last no, no, fifty no, no, years, is history. that an excuse, sir, for Hamas? Not history. Not to history. I'm kill talking about Israeli the eight months. Civilians. No, no. I'm talking about. Uh, give me time to answer. I'm talking about eight months before the 7th of October. Yeah. First of all, I am, you know my position. I'm against killing any civilian, whether Palestinian or Israeli. That's something that I believe in. I am a man of nonviolence, and I don't accept killing any civilian. But you cannot get stuck only with the fact that Israelis were killed, and so it is justified to kill 10,000 Palestinians. That is unacceptable. And it's not 1,400 Israelis that were killed. They were not all civilians. There were civilians, and that is unacceptable. But there were 310 Israeli soldiers and generals and, and officers. So this has to be mentioned when you mention the number. But what I concern about, not only the fact that we have been under Israeli oppression and occupation for 56 years, not only the fact that 70% of the population of Gaza have been under siege for 17 years, not only the fact that 70% of the people of Gaza are refugees who were displaced by Israel in 1948. But more than that, eight months before the 7th of October, Israeli army conducted and Israeli illegal settlers conducted massive attacks on us in the West Bank, not in Gaza. The West Bank is not governed by Hamas. They attacked us in the West Bank, killing 248 Palestinians, including 50 children. One of these children who was shot to death by Israeli army was only two and a half years old. And they never even apologized for that. Add to that settlers' violence. Settlers were attacking Palestinian cities like Tormus Aya and Sinjil and, uh, and Hawara, burning houses, burning cars, threatening people in their own homes. Today, today, an Israeli settler, today in the West Bank, shot to death a Palestinian in the village of Sawia because he was harvesting his olive tree. We are subjected to the worst form of terror and occupation. If Palestinians were occupying Israelis, you would keep saying that. But now, just Mr. because Bargotti, Israelis on, were, on some of what you've just because, mentioned. Just because, just because. Just hear Israelis me, sir. Also, just hear me out, Mr. Just, Bargotti. No, no, some of the points that you've just mentioned about mm. civilians being under attack by the IDF. We did ask this question of the Israeli authorities, the spokesperson, or, 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 or the, uh, the ex-IDF personnel who've been on our show. Now, their version is that, look, we are for the Palestinian people. Palestinians, innocent Palestinians, are not our enemy. And we don't want them to be a casualty, but they are blaming Hamas for it. They say... It is their claim. Why? Don't get me wrong, Mr. Badwati. They say okay. that Hamas is using innocent Gazans as human shield. That's not true. That's a, that's a big fat lie. It's not true. The correspondent of Al Jazeera, his wife, his daughter, his son were in a safe in a house in the south of Gaza where Israel said it will be safe place. And who bombarded and killed them? Israeli airstrike. They were not, they were not uh, taken by Hamas or covered, covering Hamas. This was a peaceful family, and you saw it all on TV. You do agree that I am a civilian. I am a medical doctor. I've been practicing medicine for more than 45 years. I, as a medical doctor, in my white coat, in 1996, when I was treating an injured person who was bleeding, I was in my white coat, an Israeli sniper saw me, and shot me twice. I still carry 35 shrapnels on my back and shoulder. So don't tell me that they're not targeting civilians. Who killed Shirin Abu Aqli, who was the, mo who was the most peaceful American Palestinian journalist? Israeli snipers. Who is killing civilians today in the West Bank? 110 up till now. 
Israeli, Israeli army and Israeli settlers. This is a case of injustice. You cannot put the two sides on equality here. It's one side that is occupying the other. As much as you could not say that Indian people who struggled against British colonialism were to be blamed for the fact that Israel, that British soldiers were shooting your people in demonstrations. Now, Mr. You, Margotti, you remember, you remember what Mahatma Gandhi wrote in 1933. He warned that man, that clever man, warned against what's happening today in Palestine. And he said that replacing Palestinian people and ethnically cleansing them out of their country will create so many problems in this region. And that's exactly what has happened. You, the people of India, should be on our side. You've always been on our side. Mr. Bargotti, we, we have sent these, humanitarian aid. These, liars, we, of these we, we, people who are spreading lies about the, the, Mr. the Bargotti, crimes you they will, are committing you, I'm sure you would us. acknowledge, sir, that India has sent uh, humanitarian aid. Uh, a plane that's full of, not uh, enough. No, 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 that's no, no, not I, enough. I just want to if ask Indian you, sir, one final question, no, 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 Mr. No, no, Bargotti. No. Before Indian government should not support Israel. Indian government should support the Palestinian people because we are like you. We are like you. We are suffering from colonialism, settler colonialism, and you should be on our side. I think that's what you Mr. Bargotti, finally, I want to ask you, sir, there is a debate on how should Hamas be designated. In your view, Hamas what does the Hamas, the Palestinian, uh, what does Hamas, the Hamas stand the... for, sir? Is it a force of resistance or a terror Hamas organization, is, I as know, uh, I know. many are calling I'm it? Not going, I, I don't speak on behalf of Hamas, but I can tell you two things. If Israel had accepted two-state solution, Hamas would have agreed. But the Palestinian Authority signed a peace agreement with Israel, and Netanyahu killed it. Netanyahu not only killed the peace agreement, he aggravated the Israeli public to assassinate the prime minister of Israel, Yitzhak Rabin, who signed peace agreement with Palestinians. And the mission of Mr. Netanyahu all his life has been no to Palestinian state. The whole of Palestinian land, which is historic Palestine, should be exclusive for Jewish people. And he passed a law in the Israeli parliament which says that the right of self-determination is exclusive no, no, Mr. for Mr. Bargotti, Jews. are you then suggesting that Mr. Netanyahu was waiting for Hamas to kill innocent Israelis so he could yes. uh, launch a counter-strike and you're yes. calling it genocide? Yes. yes, he is doing genocide now because his main goal is ethnic cleansing of Gaza. And if he could... He would displace all Palestinians okay, if, in Gaza if, into Egypt. Fair enough, Mr. Bargotti. If what if what uh, Israel is doing in Gaza Strip is genocide, how would you describe yes. the attack by Hamas? Uh, it's a, it's an unacceptable attack on civilian people that should not have happened. I agree with you. But the main thing now is that an Israeli army, official army, a country that claims to be a democracy, is conducting genocide against another people. If Hamas is a militant group, but Israel is, an, is a state, right. it's an army, an official army, and not only that, they have 2,000 American troops with them. How could they participate in this war crime, three war crimes at the same time, against innocent civilian Palestinians? Okay, this is, is also becoming a war of uh, versions, uh, many people would say. Mr. Mustafa Barbotti, thank you for joining us uh, and thank you uh, for sharing your perspective with us uh, as we track this uh, war as it goes along in detail. Thank you for joining thank us, you. viewers, and, uh, on Times Now. Thank you. Thank you. And please verify any tape before you broadcast it, because it's all lies. Thank you so much.